Hello everyone, this is Jinxie, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. Relatively quick video here today, I just wanted to share some interesting new information the member of the community has provided for us. So if you recall in our previous longsword video about the Zora Magdros longsword, we did mention a certain commenter. This commenter mentioned that our HP values were off according to their testing, which prompted us to retest some things and find out more accurate values to use for status calculations. And now this commenter beat the bite has made a huge Reddit post about all all of their testing results. They mention a lot of different things, but in my opinion, the most exciting news is HP counts on most of the monsters in the game. Now, this is a really long Reddit post we're about to go through, so before we get started, quick reminder. We do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and various things that interest us and little memes we make, and Tuna does also stream almost every day live on Twitch. Supporting us on these two platforms is one of the best ways you can support us completely for free. Alright, let's talk about the testing results on this Reddit post, HP values and all. And of course, the Reddit post will be linked in the description if you want to read through it yourself. And keep in mind, beat the bite air francais, so there are possibly going to be translation issues. Alright, let's go ahead and run through this top to bottom. So first off, as Beat the Bite mentions in the Reddit post, you do need to take this with a grain of salt because it is all manual testing and it's simply not as precise as real data mining. So Beat the Beat starts off by talking about their methods, which are pretty simple archaic testing methods, which is just running a lot of different tests, comparing those figures to the ones we had in Vanilla Monster Hunter World that were data mined, and then also damage counting every single bit of damage done in TA runs, which is impressive. I can say that I have done this kind of manual damage counting before, which is not easy and very laborious, so huge props to BTB. So first of all, testing data, BTB covers damage dealt by the players. Now they mentioned dealing less damage than compared to low rank or high rank, around 11 to 20 percent according to some, some tests say 15 percent, some of our testers have said 30 percent, but this does line up with our testing in that there is in fact a master rank defense mod for monsters. I haven't done any personal testing on this yet, so I don't want to state any definitive figures. But yes, there is a master rank defense mod, which is why you will be dealing less damage in master rank than compared to say the training pole or high rank or low rank monsters. And when you combine this with much higher HP pools and much higher flinch values, this is what makes monsters take so much longer to kill in master rank. Next up, they talk about Mega Barrel Bombs doing 225 each because of the Master Rank modifier of 1.5, Blast dealing 300 per proc, which we've covered, and Poisons dealing either 160, 320, or 520 per proc just depending on whether 1 star, 2 star, or 3 star, which lines up with all of our personal testing as well. Although I did not know that apparently Uragon and Radaban take 18 ticks of damage each, meaning they take 720 total damage instead. And of course, Shara takes 600 per blast proc and 80 damage per poison tick. Okay, next up they talk about all the clutch claw mechanics. So first up they say that firing your ammo deals the same amount of damage regardless of how much ammo you're carrying, and it does depend on the hit zone value of the monster, and rocks apparently have a motion value of around 16, but it isn't dependent on your raw. I have not looked into any of this myself, but neato. Now as for the Clutch Claw smack, this is dependent on true raw, and it looks like the hook shot from the Clutch Claw has a motion value of 9, and the Claw smack has a motion value of around 8. Now, next up, the more interesting part, when tenderize all monster parts are not equal when it comes to damage increase. This lines up with my testing from the beta. Now, they mention a few things, but the most important part is the edit at the end. So the Reddit user Last Zergling points out that there is an actual math formula for it, which I always assume to be the case. So to quote his comment, the Clutch Claw tenderize formula is x plus 100 minus x divided by 4, where x is the original hit zone value. This is very interesting because it does line up with what little testing I have done on it, however, I need to do quite a bit more testing to confirm the formula is accurate. But yes, definitely something I will be looking into. Now let's talk environmental damage. According to BTB, environmental traps are still the same. 5% of health for any rock drops and Dragonite spikes are 8% each. And Shara big rocks are 16% each each phase, which makes sense because the final boss monsters tend to take twice as much damage from various different things. Interestingly, Turf Wars have apparently been nerfed and are now only 10% of max health instead of 15% from high rank. I cannot confirm any of these numbers, but the 5% and 8% for Dragonator and Rock Drops does line up with my personal testing. Now, for Wall Knocks, which has been introduced with Iceborne because of the Clutch Claw, there are apparently three different damage levels you get that depend on the stamina of the monster. So if a monster is close to full stamina, like at the beginning of a fight, it's 2% of max HP. Once they are tired, it's 2.5%. 
and once fully exhausted with the flat heartbeat underneath of their icon in the minimap, it's 3%. And apparently Shara only takes 2% from war smashes, but I'm also pretty sure Shara doesn't get exhausted. I could be wrong though, but regardless, interesting test results. Alright, let's talk about the bulk of this post, which is going to be the monster's HP. So BTB says they get around a 3.2 increase over the high rank versions, which does line up with our testing as well. According to BTB's testing, 2 player scaling is now 1.7 times and 2.5 times for both 3 and 4 players. Now the most interesting part of this to me is that apparently this applies for Arena, so they are now scaled to solo runs if you go there alone. Off the top of my head, I can't really think of any Arena weapons that are necessarily worth getting, however this is still very interesting and something I'm definitely going to look into. And as per they did in high rank, the arena monsters also do have less total HP. In particular, the event Garuga Arena apparently only has 50% base HP, making it really good for farming hero coins. Neato. Now finally, before we get into the actual HP values themselves, in low rank and high rank monsters did all have 5 possible HP rolls. These were set at 1 median one, while you had a plus or minus 1.5% or 3% HP value. According to Beat the Bite, this is still the case, but it's plus or minus 0.75 or 1.5. They do state they're not 100% certain on that though, so in the HP listings we're about to go over, they are going to just place the ones that they found. This is already a huge amount of work that they have had to do, and we really appreciate that. I don't think anyone expects them to reiterate all of these tests over and over until they get 5 exact HP values. So just be aware that the HP values we're going to go over could be plus or minus a few percents. Alright, let's start off with the Fanged Wyverns. So Great Jagras has 12,500 HP, Great Gyrus has 14,000 HP, and Odegaran has 90,200, give or take a few hundred. Dodogama has 17,400, Toby 1 Kenobi has 16,820, and Sith Toby 1 Kenobi has 17,690. Emo Odegaran seems to have the same as old Odegaran with 19,200, and New Best Boy has 23,450. Moving on to Bird Wyverns, Rock Addict has 15,100. Pukey Boy has 15,960, The Flasher has 15,100, Rainbow and Proud has 18,300 to 18,450, Young Garuga has 22,500, and Scarred Young Garuga has 25,350. Moving on to Brute Wyverns, that one kid that's always playing in the mud has 14,340, Flamethrower T-Rex has 18,380, The Rolling Bones has 18,600, and Rock and Roll Boy has 27,300 to 27,950, which does line up with our personal testing. Bombro has 16,240. Soul T Rex has 19,200. It was me has 19,130. Folger Anjanath also has 19,130, as does Melting Tail T Rex. And finally for Brute Wyverns, I'm going to chase your monster through every single area of the entire map and make them run away from an area within 30 to 45 seconds of fighting within said area, and if you dung pod me, I'm just going to follow them into the next area, so your hunt's going to take an extra 5 minutes because I'm in this investigation. Has 28,080 HP. As for Pison Wyverns, Mudfish has 16,520, Lava has 25,200, and finally, screw your Volcano weapon models, you thought ICB was bad? Well, my weapons are best for pretty much every single ice weapon in the game, gets 14,610. Moving on to Flying Wyverns, House Flippers gets 1800 to 18150. Floofy Sky Rat gets 1800 to 250. I Have Terribly Designed Aerial Combat gets 19200. I Have Extremely Well Designed Aerial Combat gets 20600. Master Rank Ruined Me Because I Literally Never Stop Digging or Charging also gets 20600. Pink House Flippers gets 19200. I Have Even Better Aerial Design Combat Because I Have Patterns in the Air gets 20600 and fight me once in the Guiding Lands while tempered, and then literally never fight me again because you can just melt parts, now gets 22,190. Sleepy Sky Rat gets 21,240. Ice Kelby gets 20,150. I'm a cat but the spikes are on my tail instead gets 20,150. Trip Lock Me or Watch Cutscenes for Half of the Hunt gets 19,200. Still Bad Aerial Combat with a bunch of ice included now gets 19,200. Tactical Nukes Incoming now gets 29,600. I roar constantly, but I am still a much better designed fight than my counterpart gets 20,400 to 21,260. People Only Love Me for My Tail Cuts gets 21,160. And Shit Zone Galore also gets 21,160. Moving on to Elder Dragons, My Little Pony gets 21,400. If I spawn in blast mode, Reset gets 27,500. Mama Teaching You Not to Step in Puddles gets 28,060. Capcom actually improved my aerial combat, got 25,780. My head hit zone values are basically a better training pole, got 23,400. Better Bring Your Inhaler got 27,500. Finding Nemo got 25,600. 
and I'm what 18 no Gigante should have been the entire time, got 25,160. All right, that is all I got for you on this one, everyone. Thank you as always for checking out the video. If you know anyone interested in finding out how much HP monsters have an Iceborne, be sure to share the video with them. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like the video and let us know in the comment below what you think. It really does help. Thank you as always to Honey over on Honey Hunter World for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with. The Iceborne Builder Beta now has sharpness values, putting us closer and closer to a completed builder. And of course, a huge, huge thank you to Beat the Bites. This video would literally not be possible without their testing results. They also wanted to make sure that I did give a big shout out to the French Monster Hunter community. As I mentioned before, Beat the Bite Air Francais and they did share this information with the French Monster Hunter community first and owes them a lot. So this is out to you, French Hunters. Please be sure to go check out the Reddit post in the description below and show Beat the Bites post some upvote love. If you'd like to find hunters of all different skill levels to hunt with or just chat about different changes, be sure to check out our Discord server, the Mathlos Nest. Just make sure to use the Iceborne specific channels to make sure our PC players do not get any spoilers. And don't forget we do have a Twitter where we post updates about videos, our thoughts on things, as well as various little memes we make, and Tuna does stream almost every single day on Twitch. Other than sharing the video, following us on these two platforms is one of the best ways you can support us completely for free. And of course, none of this is possible without the generosity of our patrons. And an especially huge thank you to our new patron, Fancy. Your support really does mean the world to us. It's a constant reminder that we should be doing our best and putting out the best content that we possibly can. So thank you again. All right, that is all we have for this video. There is plenty, plenty more Iceborne content on the way. If you'd like to see that the moment it comes out, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. If you don't click the notification bell, YouTube won't let you know when things come out and stuff. You know, if you're interested, up to you. All right, happy hunting hunters. See you in the next one. Bye.